Hello, everyone. I'm Jing Li, member of Group Two. Today, our topic is the biodegradation of microplastics in the aquatic environment. Our presentation includes four sections: introduction, biodegradation, current approaches, and future direction. There are many kinds of plastics used in our life and industry manufacturing. These five types are the most common. Polyamides is used to make some fibers such as a toothbrush, bristles, and fishing line. Polyethylene is used to make some inexpensive uses such as the supermarket bags and plastic bottle. Polypropylene is used to make some tough product such as the bottle caps and the drinking drawers. Polystyrene is used to make some food containers such as the food packaging and vending cups. Polyethylene terephthalate is used to make carbonate bottles and peanut butter jars. So, what are the microplastics and their sources? Microplastics is the plastic particles whose diameter less than five millimeter. They may come from some primary source, such as the fiber of the clothing, cosmetics, pellets, and noodles used to make large plastic. Besides, they may come from the large plastics, which can be broken down physically. When I search the microplastic by Google Scholar, there are 29,000 results. So why do we care about microplastics so much? Besides their low biodegradability as large plastics, their size is the most important reason. Because they are very tiny, they are hard to be collected and recycled. They could be suspended in the air and water for a long time. They are easy to be taken into humans' body by breathing. They can be eaten by aquatic creatures and be taken into humans' body eventually. As of 2014, there were about 5.25 trillion microplastics in the surface of the ocean. If they disappear by natural degradation, it would take 1,000 years, 10 centuries. So we have to take some measure to deal with this big problem. There are three main methods: chemical digestion, filtering membrane, and biodegradation. All of these methods have both pros and cons. Today we are mainly gonna talk about biodegradation. Next, Fu Bing will describe the specific pros of biodegradation. First, we will talk about microbes capable of degrading microplastics. Here are some representative bacterial strains that could degrade plastic. These microorganisms use polymer materials as the carbon source and induce changes in morphological structure and chemical structure of microplastic. Also, bacteria consortia, which have two or more bacteria, can work together to decompose microplastic, eliminating the effects of toxic metabolites produced by some strains present in the consortia. In addition. Many fungi revealed high degradation rates and capacity for degrading several polymer types. Several representative strains are listed here. The biodegradation of microplastic can be completed in the following steps. Sometimes pre-oxidation of plastics is needed to add more hydrophilic functional groups to increase biodegradability. Then microorganisms adhere to the surface of microplastics and form biofilms. Next, microbes secrete enzymes, and the plastic material starts losing its mechanical stability. Then the biodegraded plastic polymers will be fragmented into smaller units by the action of enzymes. Finally, the lower molecular weight compounds. Produced during biofragmentation are transported inside the microbes and undergo a series of enzymatic reactions, which lead to their conversion to biomass or complete degradation into carbon dioxide and water. Here, we use polyethylene as representative to introduce the degradation pathway. As mentioned before. Pre-oxidation will introduce more hydrophilic functional groups into polyethylene. Then, further oxidation will produce ketones and carboxylic acid. 
then the intermediates will undergo beta oxidation, and the products will go into citric acid cycle and be mineralized. Microbial biodegradation of microplastic is affected by a wide variety of factors that can be grouped based on the polymer characteristics and environmental conditions. For polymer characteristics, increasing the molecular weight of the polymer decreases its degradability. Also, polymer with side chains are less degradable than those without side chains. Besides, enzymes mainly attack the amorphous regions of a polymer. So the more crystalline part of the polymer, the less biodegradable the polymer is. The melting temperature, which is calculated by the change of enthalpy over the change of entropy in the melting process, could also be used to compare the degradability of microplastics. The higher the melting temperature, the lower the biodegradation of the polymer. As for environment factors, Temperature and pH are important because they will influence the activity of enzymes of microbes functioning in the biodegradation process. Also, the pretreatment with UV light of microplastics will decrease the hydrophobicity of microplastics, and this improves the degradation of plastics. Next, Zhao Hong will introduce current approaches of biodegradation of microplastic. After being equipped with some background knowledge of biodegradation, we can now take a look at some current approaches with the help of synthetic biology. Protein engineering of enzymes and strain engineering of microorganisms are two common ways to degrade polyethylene terephthalate PET, a kind of plastic material widely used in fibers for clothing and containers for liquids and foods. Superior activity of engineered bacterial hydrolases in hydrolyzing PET films and fibers compared to the wild type of enzyme is observed in the literature as shown in the histogram on the right hand side. We can see that the role of protein engineering to enhance the catalytic properties of the enzymes and its potential in biodegradation of microplastics are crucial. We can also enhance the biodegradation through strain engineering of microorganisms. The products resulting from the degradation of PET substrate are mainly terephthalic acid TPA and the mono 2 hydroxyethyl terephthalic acid MHET as shown in the chromatogram here. The enzymes produced from engineered microorganisms can be active against BET in a saltwater-based environment and perform better than the wild type of enzyme, which means that engineered microbial strains are an eco-friendly solution to the existing environmental problems. Once we know the approaches to decompose the plastics, how can we know whether the biodegradation is actually happening or not? Here are several methods available for either measuring the properties of the polymers or those of the system for microbial growth. We can use SEM, NMR, GPC, and FTIR to quantify the surface properties and molecular structure of the polymer, or we can measure the tensile strength of the sample to see if it has changed. We can also apply the clear zone method and gravimetric analysis to the sample. The activities of biodegradation can also be estimated with the pH variation and the ADP to ATP ratio. In the next section, we will be discussing on some future directions in this field. The negative impacts of plastic materials on ecosystem and public health have raised concerns to develop successful solutions for plastic degradation. Biodegradation have become a widely approved category of degradation mechanism due to its eco-friendly nature and affordability. These potential tools and advices may help to improve the ability and rate of biodegradation and put it into large-scale applications. Protein engineering shows an important role to enhance the catalytic properties of the enzymes and potential in biodegradation. A string engineering technique has been applied to construct a much efficient microbial stream to degrade synthetic polymers. Both of the two tools are crucial and promising. More examples about them have been evolved in previous content. Besides, 
Metagenomics is the study of genetic material recovered directly from environmental samples. Metagenomic approach is an advanced innovative platform for studying the diversity of enzymes and microorganisms, and it could help identification of highly specific and novel enzymes acting on synthetic polymers from unculturable microbial community. Metagenomics has been performed for catalyzation of plastic degrading enzymes. Scientists and industries could select from these pool enzymes for their research and industrial applications. Moreover, main futurist approach for plastic bioremediation will be based on in silico genome mining of uncommon plastic degrading enzymes. High throughput screening based on computational technologies in systems and synthetic biology in connection with genomic, transcriptomic, and metabolomic data would drive more efficiently to the expected molecules. Genome mining will allow radical exploration on biodegradation based applications targeting synthetic polymers by characterization of novel degradation genes and identifying the role of enzymes. And combined chemical biological treatment could be an effective approach for plastic removal. For example, ozonation pretreatment strongly enhances mineralization of PIs by penicillium variable. The thermal pretreatment of HDPE at 70 Celsius degree for 10 days significantly improves the biodegradation by Klebsiella pneumonia. In addition to these potential tools to improve the ability and rid of biodegradation, Plastic upcycling would be another good choice to provide eco-friendly and economic solution. Bio-based and bio or chemical hybrid technologies could help the development of sustainable biopolymers. For example, PET could be combined with renewably sourceable monomers to produce high-value fiber reinforced plastics, which are predicted to save 57% in the total supply chain energy and reduce greenhouse gas emissions by 40% over standard petroleum-based fiber-reinforced plastics. And by the combination of pyrolysis and microorganisms, non-degradable plastics such as PET, PE, and PS could be converted into biodegradable counterparts, namely PHA. That's all. Thanks for watching. Feel free to comment.